It's when you don't try, I have a problem. Fight, flight, or freeze. We're fighters. And understand this, if you don't pay attention to this, this is gonna fly by you. You'll miss this segment of the training. You were in a freaking place where you could have freaking became a multi, multi-millionaire this year. Can you become that badass motherfucker when you walk out of here and stay plugged in? Yeah. If you can, you're gonna get it. Wake up, listen to me. Some of you guys can't be bothered to get better, but for some reason you pay money to go to an event and you just think showing up's gonna change something. Whoever told you showing up's gonna make you great was a liar. Showing up puts you in the game. Does that make sense? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Everybody say mastery. Mastery. That's what we're here for. Yep. Nicobe Bryant, check a box, go to a basketball camp, say, done. No. No. Did it. No way. No, he, tra he trained every freaking day. And if anybody in this room watches me, you know that we train every single day. If you watch Brad Lee, you know that Brad Lee trains every single day. I'm 43, he's 53. Some of you are in 20 and you can't even get up. Come on. What's your problem? Come on, wake up. Now our goal today is to be direct. You guys want to like be fed ice cream and, and be and be treated like three, four, and five year olds and we'll Hell make no. you feel good today? Yeah. Or do you <laughs> or do you want the cold hard truth? Which one? Cold hard truth. Cold hard truth. Cold hard truth. Cold hard truth is this. Everybody say same resources. Same resources. We all got the same fucking resources. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. Does any of you have access to people that other people don't have access to? A few. Most of us have access to the same resources. Yet some of you, you're not as good as you should be. So today, me and Brad's goal and my team's goal is to change that. That is it. There's where you are, where you want to go, and what you're willing to sacrifice. And in order to be great, you're going to have to give up some shit in your life and replace it with some good stuff. And to us, that is called well, that's called wealth, it's called training. The only way to wealth is through self-improvement. If you don't make time for self-improvement, you can't bitch when you don't get better. Am I right? right? As we go through the day today, what I want you to understand is this. We have one, we have one rule, right? We be direct with each other. Is that cool? Yeah. Nobody gets their feelings hurt. It literally costs nobody any amount of money in this room to mess up, does it? Nope. If I hit you with an objection and you mess up, how much did it cost you? Nothing. Nothing. Do, do you think people feel less of you or more of you to get up here and try? More of you to try. It's when you don't try, I have a problem. Fight, flight, or freeze. We're fighters. We're going to fight for our family. We're going to fight for Holy ourselves. Fighters. We're going to fight for our team. And by the way, this is no hype game. I don't want somebody to be like, oh man, these guys are all fired up bullshit. We make a lot of money. We close deals all day long. All day. We, are, we are talking to you about sales and closing today. That is all we're talking about. And one more thing mm -hmm. that I'm really gonna bring to the table today. Building a team. Who wants to build a great team? Come on. Okay, every single one of you. What's the value of becoming the best in the world at what you do and then not teaching it to anybody else? Mm -hmm. Guys, your goal is to become the elite, the top 1% in whatever industry you're in. Take whatever industry you're in, top 1%. What does that pay you? A lot of fucking dough, doesn't it? Okay, now, now you got all that money, now what do you wanna do? Go build a team. You wanna go build a team full of killers. Some of you are running around out there and you walk around, you tell everybody how great you are, but you don't have a team, okay? Did anybody feel the presence of my team as you walked in here today? Would you guys love to be surrounded by a team that had your back like that? Guys, listen to me, that is my ultimate goal for all of you, that's the end goal, is to create a community around you that holds you accountable daily, that literally, even though that you're the leader, you come in, sales meetings are already being had, teams are already fired up, sales are already being made, revenue's already done, and you don't even have to tell them what to do. You were the example, and they came with you. Does that make sense? Hell yeah. Okay, so it's about finding the right people, it's about becoming the right person, and ultimately, about closing every motherfucking deal. That's what we're gonna talk about all day, okay? I want you guys to understand that some people can't be bothered at all. I asked who went to the gym this morning. Who worked out this last night? Raise your hand. Yeah. Now, by the way, can I say a couple things to some of you? We talk about working out, right? Yeah. You know, some people, like, it gets old. Mm -hmm. Right, Brad? You're like, exercise. Like, man, hey, let's talk about money. Dude, 
dude, what's the value of freaking making any money when you look in the mirror and you hate yourself? Do you think you're gonna make more money if you like yourself? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Guys, come on, man. So number one, everybody write this down. Become a leader. This is where we're gonna start this morning. Me and Brad are gonna go back and forth. Hey, can I say something? Absolutely. You say write down become a leader. You're already a leader. Facts. You're just a bad one. Or a good one. <laughs> Serious, like everybody is a leader. Hey, by the way, write that down. Everybody is a leader. It's either a bad one or a good one. Yeah. It's good to know that. Leader if you have influence over anybody, even your kids. Like it doesn't matter. You are a leader. So when people are like, you know, I don't know, can I be a leader? You are a f- leader. 100%. You just need to freaking realize it and then realize that leadership, right, and practice go hand in hand. You don't want to talk about it. You want to be about it. All right, now listen to me. Everybody, give me your mind. You'll hear me say this over and over, but give me your mind. I want to tell you the cardinal sin to growing. Brad, wherever you are, be there. You're with your children at home. I know Brad personally. He goes and spends a lot of time with his kids. He's also all over the world. He's also training. He's doing events. He's doing all kinds of shit. But wherever he is, he's there. Does that make sense? (laughs) What's that? (laughs) Yeah. See, this is going to be a fucking great day. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. All right. Now, here's my goal is this. Melissa ain't going to call him right now, which is his wife, because she knows he's in here fucking helping people go to the next level. But what she is going to want when he does come home and he gets done traveling on Sunday night, she wants to feel fucking love from him. Does that make sense? His kids, he puts the phone down and he spends some time with his kids. Even if it's 30 minutes, he wears them out. So I want to tell you guys, some of you, you're here with me right now and you've got problems at home. Get fucking rid of that shit out of your head. I cannot, listen to me, we need to put a high fence around your brain right now. If you want to grow and you want to go to another level, you're going to have to give me your mind. You're going to have to give Brad your mind. You're going to have to give yourself your mind. For you to come down here and bring your problems through that room into this room and expect to learn and grow with other things going on, it ain't going to happen. You will walk out of here the same. Now, I can assure you'll walk out of here different if you can say, hey, I'm here. I'm here to grow. I am open-minded. Everybody say open-minded. I am open-minded. Let's talk about stuff today. I want to challenge the status quo, which is what Brad loves, to take people out of this life and put them into this one. But in order to do that, we're going to have to reprogram the way you think, the way you operate, the way you speak, the way you communicate, the way you act, your behaviors, right? This is a great room to reset in. By the way, I don't give a how much money you make. I know a lot of people that make a lot of money and lose it. You ever know somebody has had a great marriage and then they're divorced a year later? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's called death by a thousand paper cuts. It starts to happen, it starts to happen, it starts to happen. All of a sudden they resent each other, they get divorced, they don't even know why. That's why people fall out of love with their business. You got in, you couldn't believe you had this great opportunity, you fell out of love with it. So I want you to understand, just give us your mind today, okay? We're not gonna go crazy and psycho and nuts, we're gonna work this mind, the one thing that most people don't use. Hey, all right, maybe we might. Everybody write this down, right? Everybody wants to be led by leadership that reaches for more. Listen to me, if you're a leader, who do you wanna follow? So write it down too. What's written will be retained. People want to be led by a leader that's going to reach for more. Brad, you want to be around people that are constantly leveling the fuck up, right? Totally. That's it, guys. Am I right? Do you guys want that same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do you need to become that? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you need to reach for more every freaking day and your people will run close to you. Leadership, right here, Brad. Leaders have one thing and that's called followers. And by the way, I am a follower. I follow Brad Lee. You say, Andy, I thought you said you were a leader. No, listen up. Let me explain what a follower is, okay? A follower is somebody that follows somebody regardless of their rank, regardless of their title, and regardless of their seniority. We don't give a fuck. See, because you're my boss doesn't mean that I follow you. Does that make sense? I can literally walk into most organizations, and if I was to strip the titles from the leaders, I would ask, would you follow him now? They would say, no. 
followed him when he manipulated me to, to run for the paycheck, but I don't want to follow him. I don't want to be like him. That's right. Okay? Now watch this. A follower is someone who volunteers to go where you go. Guys, listen to me. It is completely okay. My mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. Find people that have been where you want to go. And guess what? If they're cool as shit, go follow them. And you will eventually have what they have. Does that make sense? Yep. As long as you emulate. Guys, there's a difference between em envy and emulate. Everybody's like, I don't want to fucking be like him. Dude, you're not envying him. You're emulating him. You want what they have? You want, you want the Lamborghini paid off cash? You want the, the $100 million company? You want the wife, the one that doesn't cheat on you, rides or dies with you, she goes everywhere with you, she's a little too, she's fun, she's awesome? Yep. Yeah. Okay, you want the kids that look up to you, you're the, you're the hero? You want the great fucking body no matter how old you are? You feel like you're 18 and you're on fire? You want that? Go find someone who has that. It's okay to be a follower because I am one to a few people also. But I'm very selective and I want to make sure that the people who are there on social media, they're really that way in real life. And that's why me and Brad correct so, or connect so well. So volunteer, right, to, to follow. Now, they choose to follow you. That's a big word. I chose to follow Brad. Two ways that we're going to influence Brad. One by manipulation and two to inspire. So if somebody's in this room and you're looking to build a team. See, if I'm in the solar, who's in the solar business? Raise your hand. See, if I'm in the solar business. My goal is become one of the number one solar salespeople in the world. Build my name. I want my team to know I'm a fucking killer. I am a killer. I will walk to that door. I will close that shit down. No one can say no to me. Now, I want a team. I want to teach a team to be able to do that because I, I once couldn't do it. Now I can do it. Whatever it is that you do, you're in fitness, you're in sales, we're going to cover all objections today. But guys, if you don't get this right, what value does a word track fucking have to do when you're a piece of shit? Yep. Not, not to mention, if without a team, you're not really going to go very far. Can you imagine Andy just sitting here by himself? It suck. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same. How many people come from the Bass team also? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's demonstrating. He's demonstrating that, that he can build a team. And without a team, I've seen a million people. Without a team, you're not going anywhere by yourself. That's a fact. So you're going to have to build a team. So I pay close attention. To yeah. And by the way, listen. What Brad just said, and I want you to notice. You don't even notice why you're here. A lot of you, it wasn't a word track that got you here. It is that we are surrounded and immersed. Total, Tony Robbins believes in total immersion. When I studied Tony, Tony said total immersion. Whatever I do, I'm going to totally immerse myself in it. Okay? So when you guys see something that's great, you know what you see and you don't even notice it? Is that I've got fucking 40 guys surrounding me that are ready to die at any moment for the fucking cause. You feel me? And, and that's it. And you look at me like it's me, it's not, it's us. Not, not only that, look at the work that's done by all these guys that would not be done if it was up to him. Like, again, I'm telling you, it's nothing against Danny. It's nobody individually is better than a team of people. Okay. Nobody. A team, you must have a team eventually. Mm -hmm. Like, once you master what you're doing, and you, because I'm not going to follow someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're, if you're telling me you're, you're excellent at something, and, you know, it's obviously you're not. Like I say, I don't, I don't do fat trainers. You know, you see the fat guys that come out of the gym, and they're like, hey, can we show you how to do that? Fuck that <laughs> Demonstrating, and that's what a, that's what a leader does. Is, is they demonstrate because if you're not doing it, how are other people going to volunteer to follow you at all? You can't do it all yourself. They say if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Mm -hmm. That's a team. Yep. Oh, yeah. Love it. Today is all about teaching. Am I right? Yep. yep. As we cover different topics, our goal is to get as much in on, on that topic as physically possible while we're on it. <laughs> Brad's writing something down. Watch us. Yeah. All right. So manipulation, right? That means to like leverage money or leverage. I'll fire you or to, or, or to threaten. Uh, go ahead, Brad. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying you want to change someone's behavior, you got to change their belief. The reason you do what you do is because you believe what you believe for whatever reason. So, you know, to influence their behavior, manipulate and inspire, you know, you can inspire them or you can manipulate them, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to change their beliefs or yours. The reason you are where you are is because you believe what you believe. So if you're in a leadership position already, you got a team, just remember, you got to change their beliefs. You can't yell at them. You can't freaking.
hope they want to change. You have to change their belief to change their behavior. By the way, who manages at least one or more people in a company in here? Raise your hand. Okay, lots of hands. Everybody watch this. This is the best thing you've ever had in your life that I'm going to explain that will change your entire life. Okay? So number one, managers. I put no trust. Inspiration is trust. Look, I'm going to explain to this. I had a manager. I had a GM. I had a owner. They were reliable. Everybody said reliable. Reliable. See, people misunderstand reliability and trust. Brad, if I tell you I'm going to do something and I do it, that doesn't mean that you trust me. That just means I'm reliable. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Trust is a fucking feeling. When me and my, my, my wife, Jacqueline, started doing business with Brad, we flew out to Vegas. We don't trust anybody. We didn't know lots of reliable people. We didn't trust anybody. My wife wanted to look into Brad's face. My team every day. <laughs> My team, we look in each other's face all day long. And we all do what we say we're going to do, but it doesn't mean that we have to trust each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want to explain, when you start to inspire people, trust is a feeling. It's a feeling. Just because I do what I say I'm going to do doesn't mean you should trust me for that. Trust is a feeling. If I'm close to you and you feel that you can trust me, then you can. People use their gut instinct. That's how trust is used. And I'm telling you how to create followers, which if you want to build a great team, if you really want to go far, like Brad said, this is it. So, inspiration, right? That's where you're going to get your trust. All right, do what... Give it up for the real boss. Yeah, yeah dude. She's the baddest. Hey, now listen. Um, do what you say is not trust. It's reliability. When trust is absent, everybody say absent. absent. When trust is absent, a follower will not be present. Listen to me. Every one of you that came in here and said, I run a team. <laughs> You think you run a fucking team? I can recruit your team in 30 seconds if I have trust with them and you don't. Am I right? Yes, See, listen to me. Explain this. You, th you think you have what you have? Some of you are like, I pay my people more money than anybody. So you train them by money. Cool. So they know how to do it, what to do, but they don't have a why. They're not with you for a why. They'll leave you for money tomorrow. I'll just offer more money. They'll come work for me because that's why they work for you. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Listen to me, guys. And by the way, I know this is an unattractive topic for some of you because you're like, let's get to the closing. You're thinking too small. You're limiting beliefs of fucking like, I need to make a dollar. Brad always says, hey, some people would rather have a friend than a dollar. Some people would rather have a dollar than a friend. Am I right? You're going to need people. Get it. And understand this. If you don't pay attention to this, this is going to fly by you. You'll miss this segment of the training. You were in a freaking place where you could have freaking became a multi, multi-millionaire this year. This year. I don't know what tomorrow looks like, but I know this. Can you become that badass motherfucker when you walk out of here and stay plugged in? Yeah. If you can, you're going to get it. You know what's funny is I used to sit in rooms like this. And I used to be sitting back there when someone would say something like that. And I honestly thought that dude's full of shit. That dude doesn't know where I'm at. That dude doesn't know what I'm dealing with. That doesn't. That dude doesn't know where I've been. He's just saying that because he's already there. I was so freaking negative in the back thinking that that statement was total bullshit. But looking back, it was totally true. I just did, I, I just had the wrong mindset. And I'm telling you guys right now, if, if any of you guys, because I bet you there's probably one in the room that was saying, oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's your mindset. Okay, there's three things in life, I'm telling you, these are the only three things you gotta focus on. Mindset, skill set, habits. Your mindset, your skill set, your habits. If you have the right mindset and the skill set and the habits, you can go anywhere you fucking want to go. Period. Nobody can stop you. This is all mindset, and obviously this is the way that you think as a leader. This is what you're going after. I hear people every day that are like, I just can't find the right people. <laughs> you know what's fucking funny? I know solar companies. I'm just, you know, we're talking solar for a minute. This works in every industry. I know solar companies that have 100 people on staff and 20% of them produce and 80% of them don't. Who's in charge? No, no, who's in charge? 
the person in charge is responsible for the bottom 80% of the floor. And I'm going to tell you this, that person, those top 20%, they could leave tomorrow and go to another solar company and they'd be just fine. Those people get out of bed on their own. They do great on their own. So listen to me, be careful right now. If you've got a great team, look back and say, hey, how many people do I have on my staff? Let's take the top 20% of my floor. If they left today, now to what I really have. That's how good of a leader you are. Okay? You're not inspiring them. Go ahead, Brad. Can I write another one? Yeah. Write everything. <laughs> well, I mean, as I'm talking, you, you should say some shit. <laughs> so, ultimately, what I'm writing down here is a quote that Jocko Willink and I had a discussion over at one time, and I disagreed with him. There are no bad teams. Did everybody hear that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Only bad leaders. And I was like, no, no, that's not true, uh, Jocko. <laughs> ain't, ain't one you want to argue with. <laughs> but I was arguing with him. I'm like, no, I don't agree. You know, he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, dude, listen, I'm out of that. I know. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and, he's, it, and by the way, he didn't say much. He didn't argue or anything. He was like, interesting, you know, da da da. But then I got his book. Extreme ownership? Yeah, and I read his book and I realized what he was saying, and it's true. See, again, I mean, everything's perspective, guys, and hopefully during this day, your perspective will shift a little bit, because that's all you ever need. Even when you're golfing, like you hit a ball, you know, and it goes clear over there. If you'd have just, if you'd have just adjusted the face of that club by one tiny ass degree, it would have went straight. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're just this this far away from it. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is the thing that stood out to me the most. There are no bad teams, only bad leaders. So if you think you got a bad team, go look in the mirror, Bubba. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jocko Willings, what he's talking about, they had two boat crews that are or five boat crews that are running. And if you're running a, bro a boat crew in Hell Week, the only way you get a break is to win. You get it? Pace to be a winner. Yeah, you got to win. That's it. Like, if you want to fucking sit out a race and rest, you have to get first place. If you don't, you're never going to fucking die. And, by, and, that, and that the world, too? Right? Because if you're not the best, you don't get any rest. I mean, it, look, it's hard either way. It's hard to win. It's hard to lose. But the deal is, they had this boat that kept winning every single race and then they had this boat that was in last place and you know obviously the hell week bass leaders you know what they said switch the fucking leaders take boat crew one to boat crew five swap them we're gonna switch the next race they ran guess what happened boat crew five came in first place dominated how the did that happen? Mm -hmm. You know why? The guy that was manning that fucking boat told everybody who they were, told everybody what they saw in them, told everybody that we don't fucking get tired. Everybody say, I don't get tired. I don't get tired. That's what they fucking said. I don't get fucking tired. Then they took the fucking instructor's souls. That's what he told them. You see these instructors? Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to take their fucking souls. They're not even going to sleep in bed tonight. They're going to think about fucking us. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're going to go home to their warm couches with their wives and their fucking kids and they're going to be thinking about us sleeping on this cold ass fucking beach and thinking god man i couldn't take that guy's fucking soul you know what will happen when you ring that bell in hell week mm -hmm. you're in fucking pain right brad you're dying some of you worked out last night you're fucking in pain mm -hmm. you wanted to quit but you know what happens the second you ring that fucking bell in any area of life or you don't listen right now and you don't give us your mind we will walk you off that cold ass beach right where the water is so fucking cold where your shirt's so cold but even if it touches your skin it feels like it cuts you open you're in pure fucking misery you're in hell and when you ring that bell they will walk you over to a warm shower by the hand and they will put you in that fucking warm shower and a minute later you will warm up and you will realize you just cost yourself a piece of your soul mm -hmm. yep that's the fucking truth. And that's extreme ownership by Jocko. And we study everybody. We are students of the game. So when Brad just said, there's no bad teams, only bad leaders, that is the truth. If your team isn't performing the way it should be, that's your fault if you're in charge. And by the way, listen to me. If you're someone who's a sales rep in here, and you're like, dude, I'm just a setter, or I just sell gym memberships. <laughs> Again, that's a, that's a belief problem. Your goal is, is that we knew one day we were gonna be running big teams. We knew one day we were gonna be doing big shit. So we started working at that gym counter, selling that gym pass, making fucking $10, like we were fucking billionaires. Yep. We talked to people with passion. We talked to people like we 
and own this world. We talked to people like we knew exactly where we were going. And people were like, dude, I mean, what the hell? Every time I come in here, you're so fired up. And we had infectious energy. And our goal, and Brad always talks about building a brand, and I know we'll talk about it multiple times today, that's called onboarding somebody to you. Does that make sense? When you guys meet me, my goal is to have you never forget me for the rest of your life. How many of you are gonna not be forgotten today because of the way that you introduce yourself to someone else? Mm -hmm. Never forget that. So, this is amazing. I put this down right here. Trust is a feeling. People can feel, or if they can't feel it, they won't follow you. Now, this is all about being a leader. True leaders know how to breed true loyalty and create trust. Create trust and breed loyalty. Okay? Our team, every one of us, we all wear bracelets. They say the, the warrior, um, uh, the devil said you can't withstand the storm. The warrior replied, I am the storm. We wear them every day. Most of our guys have tattoos of lions on us. Dude, we've been, we've been changed. There's a day you're born, the day you die, and the day your life changes forever. And people see that and they're like, that's a little bit obsessive, right? I've never seen anybody win not obsessive. Okay, when I, when I was fat, I want to eat all the fucking shit I could eat. But then when I started to do stuff for good, I got addictive on that and I got extreme, total immersion. Are you immersing yourself into anything that's not gonna take you in the direction you wanna go, which Brad always talks about is decision making. But creating loyalty and trust, this is where this year, these leaders in here will build their teams. I know a lot of you, you're like, dude, you guys got people and every time I see you, I'm like, where's the people that were with you last time? You're like, oh, that guy's a fucking asshole. You, what's his name? Went and worked for someone else. They offered him more money. Dude, go look in the mirror and just tell me the truth. I'm a ass leader. Right? I'm a ass leader. That's it. Okay? In a world where weak managers run manipulation and that's the norm, everybody's thirsty for a great leader and trust. Am I right? Don't believe me. Stay where you're at. Okay? I wanted to share this because last time, Brad, I went straight into mindset. We went crazy. If anybody ever seen Simon Sinek, anybody know who he is? Yeah. Yep. Simon Sinek talked about great leaders think, act, and communicate differently than everyone else in the world. I call that a one percenter, okay? He talked about everybody knows what they do, how they do it, but most people don't know why they do it. It's called the golden circle. Now listen to me, okay? If people lose their purpose, what do they do? Burn out. Yeah. You ever heard somebody say, I'm burned out? Yep. You ever heard anybody say it? In sales, Mike, you ever heard somebody say, I'm burned out? Saturated. Uh -huh. <laughs> they don't burn out. They lose their purpose. Dude, you forgot that why you took that job. And by the way, is it the, it's, it's the leader's job to explain to everybody the why every day? Why we're doing this? Why we're on our mission? Do you guys want to be the best closer in the world? Yeah. Dude, do you think you're going to be able to close anybody walking into somebody's house and not completely sold, not on what you do, but why you're doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I want to explain something to you. Let's say that someone in here buys every fucking training program on the planet, but they don't know why they're doing what they do. They still stay broke. They still stay broke. So today, like Brad said, alter your beliefs. I'm going to explain this. Change your fucking identity. Okay? Look, if you don't like who you are, guess what? Fix it. Isn't this stupid. I walk up to someone I said, hey, what's going on in your life? Why don't you have what you, what you want? And they start telling you. I'm like, dude, who can change all that right now? I can, but dude, you can. That's it. Shut your mouth. Okay, what do you want to do? You want to be elite looking? Go to the gym. Boom. Beat the sun up. Train in the morning. Get a piece of paper. Write down 10 things that you want to happen this year. Write them all down again so they're fresh on your face. Make something happen that day. Write out the night before what tomorrow's going to look like. Be prepared. After that gym, you feel like you can just close anybody in the world. You walk out great. I don't care how you feel. Listen, winners and losers both wake up the same. Most of the time, I wake up at 5 a.m. Brad, I don't want to get out of bed sometimes, but I know that winners live where quitters quit. There's another mother that doesn't want to get out either and he ain't going to get up. I'm not fucking, I'm not going to be like him. I'm getting up. Look, winners do what they don't feel like doing. They 
can do it. They do what others can't do and they do what others won't do. So your why, your cause, your belief, and your purpose is very important. And by the way, if I'm closing you, my why, my cause, my belief, and my purpose, does that matter? Does that matter? Hell yeah! No, but I'm asking you, when I'm in front of you, and we'll be up role playing here in just a minute, and I'm going to listen to some of you have some dead dry word tracks and I'm going to look in your eyes and I'm going to see if you believe and by the way if you get up here and even if your words are wrong and you believe you'll still close me but if you don't believe you won't make it so everything right now we're going to immerse ourselves in that we want to be great at what do you do for a living what do you do sell insurance right what do you do marketing marketing what do you do uh, home sales okay home sales what do you do sell cars okay what do you do sell a lot of solar cool what do you do solar uh -huh. what do you do I'll teach people how to believe themselves again but what do you do though solar <laughs> you do solar yeah. what do you do mortgage mortgage what do you do real estate everybody does something different he said real estate how many people right now are like rates are f***ing high nobody's buying real estate people are losing 80 percent of their income right now am I right right yeah I see a lot of real estate cats going over to um, solar you know why if everybody's getting out wouldn't it be the time to kill it I'd be like dude these guys are mentally they got rear naked choked out by the market I'm gonna go right now and I'm gonna tell people that six months ago if you'd have bought a house you'd have paid two or three hundred grand more and you'd probably what got a percent or two better in rate listen to me you can't refinance a payoff but you can refinance a interest rate you marry right the mortgage you don't marry the rate you date the rate yeah. am I right so wouldn't you rather right now get a better deal on a house pay a little higher in rate and then date the rate and refinance it later wouldn't you want to do that yeah. Yeah. but why the f isn't every mortgage person on the fucking social media saying that and they'd sell every house in the world right now because people it's it, is it a buyer's market if you're in real estate yeah. it's a buyer's market which means more buyers what you get paid off of right are ready to buy does that make sense? But you know what they see? They see rates. You know why? Because the mortgage people and the rest of the world keep bitching about the rates being high. Wasn't it crazy? They weren't bitching about paying 300, 300 grand over sticker, were they? Yeah. But they'll bitch about an interest rate. Yep. Everybody, know your business. Two rules. Number one, don't ever let anybody else know your business better than you. Never, never, never. Number two, try to figure out how to kick your own ass every single day. Why does your organization exist? Why does it exist? Okay? And by the way, listen to me. Do you want to be authentic and genuine? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to buy from a fake mother. But this is what training looks like. Hey, listen, Megan, I need you to go to work today and be more authentic. What the fuck does that mean? You know what that means? That means just believe in what you're doing. That means understand why you're doing it. Like, dude, if you sell cars, right? I, I made almost a million a year selling cars. Fucking where people made barely 50 grand. You know how I did it? I did it because I gave a and I knew that nine out of ten people already bought a car from someone else. I knew that if you went to star went to a Starbucks, if you went to a Starbucks, and people were saying, "Hey, what do you think about car salesmen?" They say robbers, cheats, thieves, and liars. What would they say after they met us? That's all I gave a fuck about, right? Can I control that? Shit? Mike, can you control when you go to a door what someone thinks about anybody else? No, they control what they think about you. That's it. That's the goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So every one of you in here, this is player versus player. Andrew Tate. Style, player versus player okay most people right they say well he's built different well if you mean wakes up earlier goes to bed later right ask questions trains their ass off is your entertainment budget higher than your education budget no I mean it like I know where a guy's heart is I can find his treasure by pulling out his bank statement guy says I'm up. I don't know what's going on. I keep blowing my money. I can't make it. Give me your bank statement. I'll go through and circle all the and all the food that he ate out to eat. All this. Shit. I'll circle all this stuff. And I'm like, cool. There's $2,800. If you'd have spent $1,500 of that, cooked your own food at home, went to the gym, bought a $50 gym pass, and paid for somebody to teach you once a month, you'd have saved $1,000 and you'd have probably made an additional $20,000. Yeah. No, but people don't do that. You know why? Because you want to go around telling everybody else how to fix their shit, but you can't fix your own shit.
Okay? And by the way, I'm going to say something to you. Everybody, write this down. Keep it fresh. Keep it new. Mike, you got to keep it new. Just because you're the f***ing man today, don't mean you're going to stay the man. Hell yeah. Okay? If somebody wants everything you have right now, so I'm going to give you the secret rule. Who's got kids? Raise your hand. Okay, if you've got kids, remember the day that you took your kids home from the hospital? You're like, dude, I'm going to read you a story every night. I'm going to pray for you every night. I'm going to tuck you into bed. I'm going to brush your teeth. You have no idea. You're going to have a parent that is going to freaking give everything to you. Three years later, brush your f***ing teeth. Go to bed. Go to bed. Leave me alone. You don't keep it new anymore. You don't keep it fresh. Your newness is gone. And that's a f***ing problem. Don't be one dimensional. Number two, okay, the love on the wedding day, you've heard a million times, isn't enough to sustain a marriage. Listen to me. Dude, if you treated your relationship like it was and you just met, instead of treated it like it was the end, there would never be an end. Am I right? Yes? Yes. Guys, listen, this is f***ing common sense. I watch people going to counseling saying, hey, me and her just can't get along. Well, do you treat each other like it's the beginning still? No. No? Well, why not? I don't f***ing know. But we'll pay you to f***ing sit here and ask questions. Dude, it's so stupid. You've, you're ungrateful now. You've lost your gratefulness. I'm going to tell you guys some stuff, and I don't want you to be me. I want you to be you. I want you to go get everything in your life you've ever wanted and more. Brad doesn't want me to be him. He's, he's, he's his own person. But you know what I love? I love that Brad said, do the f***ing work. And I said, what does that mean? He said, stay grateful. He goes, dude, remember we were sitting there on the back balcony? And you go, it's really hard to wake up when your kids are healthy and be in a f***ing shitty mood. Am I right? That's what he said. And I said, man, that's f***ing called gratefulness. And you know what I realized? That one of the reasons why I've passionately been able to train every day for 25 years in sales training, we've been able to grow, built a $100 million company, been broke, gone backwards, figured it all out, made a lot of money, done everything, and we're finally figuring it out, is that I needed a team, and for a long time I didn't have one. So the team part was why I started with leadership, because it's extremely important, and I don't feel like we talk about it enough. It's the, it's the, it's the secret to the Elliott Group. Okay, but number two, I want you to think about a couple things, right? Like what's holding you back? It's just you don't keep it new. You see that chair right there? You see that chair? What do you do for a living? You sell cars? Yep. Okay. I know guys that make a half a million a year, make a million dollars a year selling cars. I could ask him what he makes. If he doesn't answer that question, he doesn't understand what kind of chair he's sitting in. Does that make sense? Michael O'Donnell, right? How much money did you make selling, selling solar? It's a million a year. Okay. Watch this. Michael O'Donnell sees this chair. Mike, how much is this chair worth if you sell solar? If I get it at your kitchen table, it's worth everything. He says it's worth two million a year. How many of you are in here in solar and you're, you're making ten grand? You f***ing don't get it. You're disrespectful to the f***ing industry. Do you hear me? But don't do it anymore. Do you want to be an industry leader? Yeah! I'm asking, do you want to be an industry leader? Listen, in your industry, is everybody talking about you? If they're not, who's problem is that? Whose fault is that? Is that what you want? If that's what you want, we're going to f***ing war. This chair, when I sold cars, they told me it was 120 grand a year chair. Right, Brad? That was about what guy made selling cars. I made 716. You know why? Because my thinking, my mindset, my skill set, my habits, like Brad talks about, were 7x a normal mother do you guys want to be normal? No. No, then listen to me. Your chair you're sitting in, top 1% in the industry, what do they make? Write it down. Your goal is to be in the top 1%, not to get some information today. So write down what is the top 1% in your industry earned. What's that chair worth? Okay? That's the way that we train. We train as if we're going for the top 1% in that industry. Okay? And we're going to take your family with you. So, mindset, the way that we believe. What you think about all day long is ultimately what you become. That is it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.